Hey everyone, Jexy here. Thanks so much for tuning in to another video. I want to apologize for my last video and the, the lighting. I tried to do something different and it failed and I didn't realize till after I filmed. This is still a learning experience for me, so I appreciate all your support even when I fail. <laughs> so today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about people, places, and things. One of the first things that we're told when we get into recovery and we first get clean is that we need to change people, places, and things. What that means is, is not hang out with people we used to use with, not go places where we used to use, and get rid of paraphernalia or other things that may trigger us to want to use. This is a suggestion that makes a lot of sense and I can see the importance of it all the way around. However, I had a lot of trouble with this because my people, places, and things weren't things I could change. My people was my family, my places was my home, my own bathroom and bedroom, and my things were actually times of day. Three o'clock in the afternoon was like a real struggle for me. It was the time that I used, I felt like a drag later in the afternoon and I always used like a pick-me-up. So when I got clean, I didn't, I didn't have the ability to change people, places, and things the way that other addicts can. You know, if your people, places, and things are, you know, going to the bar with a group of people who you drink with, it, you can stop going to the bar with those people, right? Like, those, those changes are easy, but how, you can't change your family or your home. I mean, I guess, sure, you can pick up and move, but that's not really a feasible solution. So I had to come up with ways to change people, places, and things without, you know, in, in a realistic way. So the first thing I did in regards to things, as I said, three o'clock in the afternoon, for some reason, was a really, really hard time for me. It still sometimes can be a rough time of day. There's just something about that point of my day that I feel a little bit more worn out. I get worried if I didn't complete a lot of the things on my list that I wanted to get done. I'm worried about making dinner, getting, you know, homework for the kids. And so sometimes it can just be an overwhelming time of the day for me. So when I first got clean, I realized that watching the clock strike three was going to be a problem. It was the, probably the biggest trigger that I had. So what I started to do um, is I would go outside at five to three at the time I smoked cigarettes regularly. And so at five to three, I would go outside, I would have a cigarette. And then by the time I came in, it was five after three. And I never watched the clock turn three, like turn to three. It sounds like a silly thing, but it really made a huge difference. I found myself coming up with a new routine at that time of day. And eventually, once I got clean, I also started drinking coffee. So I would go outside, I would come back in, I would make myself a cup of coffee, and it just became my new routine. Even today, now around three o'clock, I almost always like want to make myself a cup of coffee. That really helped. I have heard like places, for example, are like my bathroom. You know, I was one of those people that, you know, my bathroom counter was was my surface. So I had a really hard time. How do I make that be different? How do I not get triggered by my bathroom? What I first started doing is, is I often use different bathrooms. I didn't use my, the normal bathroom that I had used. I would use other bathrooms in the house. Another thing that I did was, is I rearranged like the stuff that was on my sink. So I used to keep everything like perfectly clear. I just kept it clean and, and I never kept anything out. Maybe like a soap dish, but like nothing else. So what I did was is I had a, a couple bottles of perfume and I set them up on the corner of my bathroom counter. And visually, it looked different. Sometimes those little changes can really make a big difference when it comes to triggering me to want to use. So by changing the look of the bathroom counter, I stopped getting that same feeling every time I looked at it. I my eyes were like immediately drawn to the perfume I had set up and my thoughts became about that and not so much about the blank counter. When it came to my family, that took time. My husband at the time was taking a lot of narcotics, medically prescribed by his doctor, and you know, it's hard to have your drug of choice in your house. But we had talked about this ahead of time and so he had chose to lock them up where I couldn't get to them and he also stopped taking them in front of me. He made sure when he had to take his doses of meds that he did so out of the room. 
I stopped having to watch somebody take meds all the time, which was helpful. I remember talking to somebody else in recovery and they said that they were having a really hard time with mirrors. Like mirrors were their were a big trigger for them. That's the surface they use for drugs and they were everywhere. And how was she going to get over this, you know, this trigger of having mirrors? You can't just be like, I'm never going to come in contact with a mirror again. So I'd given her a suggestion. I said, you know, it's like with anything else, we can trick our brains into learning new habits, into learning new connotations for things. And so I said, why not, you know, do something silly. Every time you see a mirror, like, spin around in a circle and say, I'm beautiful. Or, you know, something, just something, something that's positive for yourself and also something that's silly. And I said, every time you see a mirror, if you do this, your brain will start recognizing mirrors as the time you do this silly, you know, the silly spin and mantra, as opposed to drugs. The more silly and the more positive the, the new behavior is, the more that it'll help counteract the negative. So like, sure, like let's say you see a mirror and you tap your foot three times. Like that's great. And it's not to say that that wouldn't work, but because it's a, a lesser thing than the strong trigger feeling, it may not be as successful. If you do something that's kind of more extreme, your brain's more likely to have it be like a shocking thing and change. Look, I'm not, I'm not a psychology major. I'm not, I don't have any PhDs and doctorates and things. But a lot of times things just make sense. If we can make new connotations for, for items, for people, for places, it's another way we can deal with the changing of people, places, and things. I was also really lucky that I didn't have a lot of using addict friends. Um, there were people in my life who were using addicts who I did use with sometimes or get drugs from, but they weren't people who were in any way important in my life. Most of my friends were not addicts. Um, they weren't even in recovery. They just were people who didn't use. Uh, you know, they'd be like normal people who would, you know, drink at a wedding, you know, maybe a party once in a while kind of thing. But I had a lot of mom friends. I didn't have a lot of outside people I had to cut off. The people I did have to cut off, like it was no problem. I just deleted their numbers from my phone and that was that. It was, it was really simple. Same with places. Like I didn't, I used by myself at home so I didn't have a lot of outside places you know even today like I've I I don't recommend it but I have gone to the bar to watch a fight uh, with a friend while they were drinking and for me like that wasn't really a problem it's not a place I would hang out regularly I don't think that I can go and hang out in bars successfully uh, on the regular but because my friends know that I'm in recovery and they would never if I could say, look, this is a little harder than I anticipated and they would have no problem with leaving. The outside places weren't a problem. One more thing that was an issue for me, uh, rolled up dollars or straws. That's sometimes still even seeing it, like my, my brain goes. But the more I made other connotations for things and the more I spoke out loud about how these things made me feel, the easier it was to move past it. I didn't keep these feelings a secret. I told people how I felt. Like I, I told people that I felt certain ways about times a day. Like everybody who's in my life today like knows three o'clock is my hardest time. Like even with over six years clean, like three o'clock like still can get me. So my suggestion for anybody who is in recovery is, you know, especially if you're new, identifying those things, those people, places, and things that, that do trigger your thoughts, think about using. It doesn't mean like, oh, this happens and I'm going to use, but like what things and what people do you have in your life that may trigger the thoughts of using? If you can identify what they are, then you can work on changing them. And so even if you can't get rid of people or never go to a place again, there's different ways you can make a different connotation for things so that those items or those places don't make you feel some sort of way. Like together... People have ideas. I can't imagine I can name any trigger that like somebody else hasn't had before. Luckily, there's a lot of people in recovery and I think this is one of those topics that if we discuss with each other what works and, and how we get through, you know, people, places and things being triggers, we can do a, we can go a long way in helping other people get past that, those feelings of wanting to use because of specific items or people. 
Look, I'll say one last thing. Things come up. You run into somebody you weren't expecting to run into. Some item that you didn't realize as a trigger pops up in your purse. I don't know. A gazillion different things could happen. Because I've practiced with identifying triggers, when I do find a new one, I immediately call somebody if it's bad. I recognize it. I say it out loud. I talk out loud a lot, even if there's nobody around. Because I think there's something about saying it out loud that kind of like makes me give it away. I don't have to hold on to it if I say it out loud. Whenever I'm having a hard day, like I'll say aloud, I'm having a hard day. It, there's a freeing feeling about it. So it's not to say that things never come up and I'm cured and I found everything that ever's gonna make me wanna use. But for the most part, I've recognized those things and, and I've worked to come up with new connotations or eliminate those things as best I can. So I wanna thank you guys all again for watching another video. Again, I upload new videos every Tuesdays and Friday. If you are interested in a particular topic, please just leave a comment on the video. Let me know what it is. I would love to chat about something that you're interested in. And also, you can actually go a long way in helping me uh, reach more people by subscribing to my channel and liking the videos. Uh, YouTube does these whole analytics and, and their formulas. The more subscribers and likes you get on a video and even comments, it, it recommends your video to more people so it helps people get the message that I'm trying to share. Again, thank you all so much for your support and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great day.